interview and job search strategies that work. Recently, I went to a relative's birthday party. Well, they have friends, and their friends' children are respectively in one of them is in the, going in the seventh grade. So I was talking to the individual, just asking him why they're studying in their school, and they told me programming. So naturally, I'm, I'm curiosity is like, wow, okay, well, that's cool. What, uh, what type of uh, programming are you doing? Java. Really? Java? That's so cool, because that's what I'm trying to actually learn myself. So here you have an individual going into the seventh grade who's, who's doing Java, who's learning Java at a school, and I was asking the, the seventh grader about Java. How do they view it? Just getting their perspective. And I learn, I learn, you know, quite a bit, uh, you know. So the point of me telling you this is if you have children and they're young enough to be in school still, meaning they're not in high school anymore or they're not in college, ask them about programming. They may not even understand that it's programming. They may not even see it how uh, an adult sees it. They may see it just as a cool project they're doing at school. And what you're after is this. If your kids can teach you programming, like Java, then you're on to something great. Because that's just another skill that you have as an adult that you can use to get a, a job. So that being said... That, that, was, that was very interesting. Learned a lot from there. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be creating an, an online community. I may use Zoom. I may use Rocket Chat to create it. And the whole idea is to hold one once a week interactive discussions with anyone willing to jump on the, the Zoom call, if you will. That, that's the easiest way to do it, I think. Um, you just go to a URL and you're there. And then if you want to learn how to do something in help desk or in IT, then we as a community can, can teach you. The whole idea here is to, if you take your hand and you move it, move it out, and everybody's knowledge is going to help you get, get to that, that objective quicker. So when you, when you talk to people, you're taking a shortcut. They've done it a certain way. They've done it for how many years? And they know the shortcut to teach you. And recently I was listening to a podcast, and on it was Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins talked about the first time that he went to a seminar with uh, Jim Rohn, his mentor. And how he came about that was he talked to another, uh, a friend of his father's, who said he goes to these Jim Rohn um, meetings and it cost X amount of dollars. I think it was like $500. And the, the guy told Tony Robbins, yeah, I pay you know 500 bucks. And Tony's like, well, that's a lot of money. And, and the guy said, well, you know, paying the $500 is nothing than, than teaching, you know, going through 20 years of, of doing something when you can just listen to somebody or you hear what they uh, are talking about and, and, and gain those valuable um, shortcuts. And that's what he did. Instead of, so Tony Robbins, in his own words, said, I took the knowledge I had there that it went from Jim Rohn and I, I, it, what would have took me 20 years took me, you know, three years or five years to do it, to accomplish it. That's, that's what the whole community is about. See what happens when you, when you teach something that, you know, a trick, a tip, a, a shortcut. When you teach a person that two things happen. One, well, a couple more than two, but uh, I'll just explain the psychology or the how the mind works from my perspective anyway. When I teach someone um, 
I'm, I feel validated for one. Wow. I'm teaching. I'm, I'm giving that knowledge to a family member, to a friend, whatnot. So I feel good. Like, okay, awesome. Cool. Second thing, or a couple things. The other thing is I'm hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth and I'm, I'm trying to understand when I'm talking to an individual, does it, what words to say in um, a 10 minute conversation? What do I need to say that gets gets my point across? Not necessarily um, how they maybe, what, what analogies can I use that they would maybe understand? You know, so they get, oh, okay. And then once you see the light bulb goes off or the, they have that aha moment. They, 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 they uh, move their head back and they, and they look up and they say, oh, yeah. And that's, oh, okay, that's when you know that person's retaining that knowledge. And in, in a 10-minute conversation, you may talk about, let's say a help desk. You may talk about it three or four times. And eventually, you know, it's going to come across. And what, what other, the other thing that happens is you're understanding from a different perspective. They're getting a help desk job, or they, they, they want to help. They want a job, and let's say they want a help desk. Maybe they they don't know what they want, but they're just trying this whole help desk thing to get to a another job in the future. And so, by uh, laying down the foundation for those skill sets, the help desk skill sets, it's going to transition. It's going to help them learn other things. So in your database of knowledge, when you, well, when I teach people, I, I say, okay, well, that, that, uh, this is how I would talk of uh, my analogy. Okay, in ten minutes, okay, I can get it down to nine or eight or five, and then leave them maybe with a website or something they can, you know, go and and research on their own, research on their own. Most individuals. That you are, that I talk to anyway. Um, if I don't, if I talk too fast, but all right, I'll see their eyes are like glazed over, you know. Um, so I I try to talk to people on on their level, or slow it down a bit. I'm getting I'm getting better at that. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting better at it. Just talking to them in their um, how they understand. Like for instance, they work at Walmart. They work at McDonald's. You know, me talking to them about Active Directory is going to make no sense at all for them whatsoever. So the how I approach that is all the McDonald one owner of a McDonald's restaurant, and that owner has many other McDonald's restaurants. So they own five or six stores, let's say, right? And all those stores have to connect to one another, all the cash registers, all the ordering has to connect because the uh, person that owns the McDonald's, it's on their account. They have five stores. So that 20 boxes of fries or 10 boxes of double quarter meat per store has to go from their account. And if it's automatic, which I think it is, there has to be a a database or a, a a network set up to where it's automatic order. You go down to the basement or you go to the freezer, let's say, and you you see okay, there's a a one box one uh, one box of quarter meat, double quarter meat, or quarter pounder meat, let's say, and you have your your scanner, barcode scanner, and you say okay, um, inventory or yeah, let's say it's from the truck. You It comes in the freezer. Before it goes in the freezer, you barcode it. Boop, right? Oh, I received one. And that puts it in the database, the system, the computer system. Then you pull out um, a, bo- a box of quarter meat, and you, again, scan it, meaning receive it or use it, if you will. So you're taking it out of received inventory into, I guess, use inventory or using inventory, if you will. And um, then, okay, updates the database. Okay, I used one box of quarter meat. Okay, accordingly, end of the week, end of the day, I need to order 
maybe every three days or whatever they get deliveries in. I need to order more, and it's an automatic process, you know. Uh, and and e- explaining to people how that works. Um, okay, oh, that's what I mean now about IT. And so they, you know, talking over their head makes it makes no sense at all. It makes no sense. You see it a lot of times, like blah, 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 blah. like I, I don't, you know, it does mean no good to teach people that don't understand because they're not going to get it anyway, and then they're going to leave and like, ah, hey, whatever. And I was just wasting my breath, really, and talking. So the the next time, who are those are who are working in a in a job, a service industry job, maybe your hotel, maybe working McDonald's, Walmart, KFC, a movie theater, a Denny's, a, a fast food restaurant, a mom, a mom and pop restaurant, uh, or ch- you know any type of chain restaurant, or anything service industry really. Um, and if you're interested in doing IT or going into the IT sector, take a, take a look at some of the technology around where you're at and maybe, maybe draw it out. You know, you might, you might start, um, you might just start drawing a line. Okay. Here's the, um, you know, the, the server room. That's where that's at. Draw a line and then, okay, figure out, okay. And if you're walking through, like, oh, those are the cables. They're Cat5 cables. They're orange, they're red, they're blue, whatever uh, whatever they are. Look at that. Say, okay, oh, that's how that connects. And it goes to maybe the front of the store where the people order, and it's plugged in. There's a cable. Well, that that's a good start. Understanding that or just seeing it and then comprehending it. Um, you know, if, if if when you go for an interview in a help desk job, let's say, right, or a call center or um, telemarketing, something like that, you you can replace the words, for instance, cash register. It's a computer. You can replace that with computer. And then it goes back to the server in the back. You know, and you can just say server, you know, that way you can kind of explain some of the concept to individuals that you uh, hire for, uh, go on an interview for. It, it's going to say it's going to sound like you're kind of BSing them a little bit, which is fine. Um, it's it, it really truth be told, it's a lot better than than saying I don't know to everything. I don't know. I don't know. It, it never works out for anybody. And then to go on an interview, it never works out. If you truly don't know. Then you you say you instead of saying I don't know I don't know and you know it's really dependent on how you look at them when you're saying it and your tone I don't know that never works out and you know to say if you don't know truly uh, the recommendation is to say you know I I don't know the answer to that and then at the same time when they're talking about it you'll say um, I'm gonna write you mind if I write this down I want to really understand that. And then, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'll get an answer for you. I will get an answer for you. And you've demonstrated a couple of different things. You've demonstrated like, um, you've demonstrated a skill as though you're, you're not a, you're willing, your willingness to learn one, because you wrote it down, wrote it down, wrote it down. And second thing is, um, I, I'm going to find out for you. I'm going to, I'm going to learn, I'm going to get that answer for you. And so that you under you know you have your answer. What that's telling an employer is this person is, you know, they know they don't know. They they understand it when they're dealing with the. So that kind of translates into when they're talking to a customer, and instead of telling the customer, uh, promising the customer that the sky is the limit, basically they can, they have the um, discipline to step back and say, you know, you know what, customer, I. I don't, I don't know, but I'm going to find out for you. Do, you. do you mind holding real quick? Do you mind if I put you in a, a, a brief hold? I'm going to ask my leadership um, what that might be. And that's, that's how that translates, essentially. We're in working environment. So the action item for this uh, particular episode of this podcast, meaning an action item is something to try out. You do something, whatever that thing is. And here's a recommendation. Take a big board, if you will, from Walmart. I get them from Walmart. 
and it's just a poster board. And write out uh, in a week's time the hours and, and name them, you know, Monday through uh, Sunday through Saturday or Monday through Sunday, basically. Write on every single hour, little blocks, and then put down when you typically um, don't do it ahead of time. Do it as you do it. So you plan out a week or you you see how your week goes. What am I doing? How am I auditing? What is my time going to this week? You write it down, boom, done. You're doing X, Y, Z for the whole week. The second week, plan it out. Plan out your, your week accordingly. And then what you're looking for is you're looking to, you're looking to audit your time. You're looking to see how much time, um, what can I do in this, 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 this time frame, these extra hours? What can I do? What can I be doing this in this one if I, I want to get a better job? Let's say I want to earn more money. Maybe you're earning 20000 you want to earn 40000 okay? Well, how do you do that? You know, first thing is audit your time. So where's where's my extra time at? Can I can I do something here where I can move move around my schedule so I can I can find time to do that? And the second thing is, or well, that's one. So leave it at one right now. So yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to this podcast. Have a great day.